In this video, I'm going to show you how to build automations that can help you save thousands of dollars on your monthly make.com subscription. I'm going to show you an advanced way of using fewer operations to process complex data. So instead of having to loop through a lot of data and burn through a bunch of operations that might burn through thousands of operations, I'm going to show you how to do that in just one or two operations. So make automations are very powerful and I don't tend to obsess too much about how many different modules I add to my automations. Sometimes we just need the modules that we need. And the way make works is that each one of these modules is going to cost you one operation, except in the case where you are looping through data like we are in this automation. So you can see if this automation is running every 15 minutes and it's downloading a hundred different posts, and then every time we come to this iterator here, we are going to loop over a hundred different posts, and then it's going to loop over two different modules. You can see here, we're going to loop a hundred times across two modules, which is going to cost us 100 operations times two modules, which is 200 operations. And then you can imagine if we had other modules here because we needed to process this data even more than we are here, which is this one module, then for every module we had here, it would increase the number of operations that we had to spend. So in this automation here, I'm gonna show you three different ways of processing the same data. This way will cost us thousands of operations per day, and these other paths will only cost us one or two operations each time we run it, instead of potentially thousands. And we're doing that by processing the data in a different place. Here, I'm processing the data in make. And in these two examples, I'm going to process the same data using Airtable automations and their scripting language instead of make automations. So again, this automation here is just a demonstration. We're making an API call here to a popular community platform. We're asking for all the recent posts. Sometimes there are 100 plus posts. And then we've designed three different ways of processing that data. So if we look at what's happening in this module here, we're making an API call. And then if I expand the data here just into the guts of the information, we can see here that we've got a bunch of different posts that we need to iterate through. And so right now you can see that these two paths here are disabled. That's what these little icons mean here. And when I run this automation, it's only going to go down this path just like that. It's going to make the API call. It's going to process the JSON that they provided, and then it's going to iterate over the post. It's going to do some minor modifications to the data, and then it's going to insert that data into Airtable. So if I jump over to Airtable here and I clear out these other test records, and then I run this automation, we're going to see that it's going down this path, and now it's just running and it's iterating over all those different posts. And here's where you can see where we're burning through all of those automations. Now to save a few operations in this example, I am filtering this operation so that it only processes 30 rows instead of the entire data set. But if I were to remove this, then it would process even more operations. So now from here, if we were to come back to Airtable, we would see that it has now inserted 29 different rows. Now, if we wanted to explore an alternate way of processing this data, then I could come here and I could disable this route and I could come here and enable this route. And so now instead of processing all this data and inserting those rows directly into make, I'm inserting the data from our HTTP call directly inside of Airtable. And so if I jump back to Airtable here, you can see that I have a table called tasks. And instead of trying to write the post directly, what we're doing is we're writing the data directly into this tasks table, and we're gonna process the data here in Airtable. Because what I have found is that make.com is really good at processing API calls and creating records, but iterating over a lot of data, it's just not very efficient. So we're gonna save that raw data into Airtable, into this tasks table, so let's come back to the automation now, and I'm going to go ahead and run this automation. This time it's going to make that API call, and instead it's going to write that data directly into Airtable. So if I jump back to Airtable, we now have this new task here that has not been processed, and I'll go ahead and delete these other examples. And so now we have that JSON data right here of all the posts coming from the API. And now what we can do is I'm going to jump over to our Airtable automations, where I've built two different automations. One of these automations is going to help us process the data in this condition, and this other automation is going to help us process the data in another scenario. So again here, jumping back to Airtable, what's happening here is that this is going to trigger when the HTTP code is 200. And all that means is that when this API call ran, we're gonna see that the status code was 200. We only want to run this automation if it was successful and that's what 200 means. And we also want to make sure that the JSON column is not empty 
and that this has not been processed before. Under those conditions, then we can move forward and process the data. And so now what we've done is we've basically taken what we've done right here and we're processing that inside of this script here. So if I open up this code, we can see here there's a function to capitalize the words. And you might wonder why we have that. Well, if I jump back to our make scenario and we look at this module here, which is after our iterator, if we open this up, what this process is doing is it's taking the post name and it's capitalizing all of the first letters of that post name so that when we insert it into Airtable, we can see that the post names always have an uppercase on the words. So you can see here, we have this code here that will capitalize the first word of the sentence. And then we also have code here, which is going to access the data. It's going to access this JSON that is in this JSON column. We have some example code here that I can remove. So we're passing this script, the record ID of this particular row here. And then we're also passing in that JSON data from this column here. And so then what that code does is it takes that JSON and it parses it into an object. And then it loops through all of the posts in that object and creates the rows into Airtable directly. So if we come back here and we look for a new record to process, we're gonna see that row six, that's this row here, six. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Then I'll go ahead and run this script. We'll go ahead and test it. If I jump back over here to Airtable and go to the posts, we should start to see it insert the new rows. There we see the new rows getting inserted. So this is gonna insert all the way to 50. In this case, the data that we have coming in has 50 different rows. That's coming from the API right here. And so again, you can see in make, all we do is the API call and write the data directly to Airtable. The data comes into Airtable as a task with the data unparsed right here. That ends up triggering this automation, which will then run this entire script. This script here will loop through the data, emulate what's happening here. It capitalizes the words and then inserts it into Airtable, except we don't need to pay for all those make operations. And this is a good time to talk a little bit about how make and Airtable are a little bit different in terms of how they manage their operations. Make.com charges you for every operation that is run in your scenario. So if you have all of these different operations, and then again, if you've got a loop here where it's gonna loop through a bunch of different posts, let's talk about the 100 posts here. And then we have a few modules here. It's going to charge you one, two, three, four, five, and then however many times we loop. So if there's a hundred here, times one, two, three, four. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got four times a hundred. So that's 400. So in total, this is going to cost us 405 operations. But with Airtable, the way they charge for automations is they only charge for a run of an automation. So if we jump back here to Airtable, Airtable is gonna charge us for one automation for running this entire thing. It doesn't matter how much we do inside of this script, everything that we do in this entire automation will only cost us one automation. So you can see how powerful that is if you use it correctly. Again, if we jump back to make.com, this is gonna cost us 400 operations. And then again, remember, if we had additional modules here because we needed to do additional processing of that data before we did the create row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different operations that we needed to run before we did the insert, this one automation could cost us a thousand operations. Now in Airtable, it would only cost us one. And inside of this script, we could do those 10 operations, but we would just do them in code. So we can turn a thousand make operations into one Airtable automation. And again, it doesn't matter how many other subtasks we add to our Airtable automation. It will only cost us one automation to trigger this entire thing. Now there is a limit in that this script can only run for 30 seconds. So that is something that you do need to consider. If you're processing so much data, that this takes longer than 30 seconds, then you would need to split that up into multiple runs here. So you'd have another script that was here. And then if that one took longer than 30 seconds, then you'd have to have another one here. But there's really no limit to how many of these scripts that you can have. So done right, using these Airtable automations, 
you can save thousands and thousands and thousands of operations. And then because of that, you can save thousands of dollars on your make.com subscription. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is that in this solution here, we are directly taking the JSON object that is coming out of this module here. Again, if we look at the output here and we look at the data coming back and we expand this open, we can see all of the different posts that are right here. And so what this module here is doing is it's simply taking that data and writing it into the JSON string column that is right here. So it's taking that raw data and just inserting that into the column here. If I open this up, we have all of the data here. Now, the one problem with this is that this text field here, if we open up this field, we are using a long text. There is a hard limit with how much text you can actually put into this long text column type. I don't know exactly what the limit is in terms of characters, but you will hit it. And if the API call that you are processing returns a JSON that is too big for this text area, then your make automation right here is going to fail. It's going to say, hey, I wasn't able to insert all of that JSON data into the column. So this works really well if the JSON and the data coming out of the HTTP call isn't too large. And so in those cases, there is a slightly more complex solution that I'm going to show you now. So now I'm going to come up to this route here and I'm going to go ahead and disable it. And then I'm going to go ahead and enable this route. And so now what this route is doing that is a little bit different, instead of just taking the data and dropping it right into that text field for the JSON, we are going to take the data and we are going to upload that to a remote file on the Google Cloud Storage platform. And then we are going to save that file as an attachment inside Airtable. So if we jump back to Airtable here, instead of saving this JSON here as a text, we're going to download it, create a file and upload it as an attachment in this JSON file here. So now let's go ahead and come back to make, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run this automation. So this time we're gonna see it come down this path. So you can see here that it created a file and then created a new row in our tasks, but instead attached a file. So if we come back to Airtable, we're gonna see we have a new row here. And instead of that JSON data being in this JSON column, it is now a file in this JSON file attachment. And so then if we come back to our Airtable automations and we go to process JSON file, it's set up in much the same way in that it's looking for a successful HTTP call. Because again, remember, we only want to process successful calls to the API here, which is represented by the 200 status code. But instead of just checking to see if the JSON column is not empty, now we're trying to make sure that the JSON file is not empty and that this hasn't been processed before. So now if I go back to the trigger here and I choose a record, and this time we're going to choose row seven, which has the attached file. And then I'm going to go ahead and process that script, jump back over to Airtable, going to jump to the posts. Notice what you'll see is that now it's processing that data from the file and it's going to run through and add all of those rows independently from make.com. And so now we've inserted these rows by processing the data that came from the API that was saved into this file. So then really the only way to figure out whether you want to use this more simple way where you just simply take the data that was from the API and drop it into the column for processing later or having to download the file is really just dependent on how much data is coming out here and whether that can all fit in a text column or not. And sometimes the only way to figure that out is just to test it, download the information from the API, and then simply try to insert it as text into the long text column. And if it doesn't error, then you know that it's going to work. If it does, then you know that you'll need to use the file method. And then if we jump back to the automations, all you would need to do at this point for either one of these methods is just to turn on the automation. And then the next time this were to run, I'll run it again. This time it's going to download the file and upload it into Airtable. And then that's going to trigger the automation automatically because now we have this on. So if I jump to the automation history, we can see that this is running. It's running through the script. So if we jump back to Airtable and go to the posts, we'll see that it added another 50 rows of data from that JSON file that we downloaded and then uploaded it in Airtable. And then if we were to take a closer look at what's happening in this, Airtable automation. Remember, if we look at this Airtable automation and we look at the actual code, it did nothing more than to load the data from that specific row, right? So the way Airtable automations work is that this is triggering when there is a row, again, where the HTTP code is 200, 
the JSON is not empty and it has not been processed, right? So in this automation, when we drop in that new row into tasks, we're getting this new row here. It simply looks at this data, takes this data, and turns it into an object in the script. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at the script and look at the code, it's this line here where we're taking the JSON that we passed in from the variable. So if we, again, if we look at the automation, we look at the trigger, then we look at this script here, we're passing in the record ID from the trigger, and then we're also passing in the JSON column data into the script as well. And so then if we look at the code again, we've got the record ID and we've got the data and we're also parsing it into an object. So what that means is that it's taking it from this text form and it's turning it into an object that we can actually use and iterate over in JavaScript. And then you can see here for each of those posts, it's creating a record. It's passing in the post ID, the post name and the post itself. And then if we jump back to this automation, which is processing the file, it's working in a very similar way, except this time we're only passing in the record ID and then if we look at the code, what's happening is it's grabbing that record ID, but then it's grabbing the attachment field. So if I come back to tasks here, it's grabbing this attached file instead. It's actually downloading that file. So this Airtable script is actually downloading it from Airtable from the actual attachment column. And then once it downloads it, it processes it in a very similar way. And then down here at the bottom, it is just doing the same thing where it's looping through all of the posts. Here's where it creates the post. And here's where we get the post ID, the post name, and the post itself. So if you want to get access to the make.com blueprint, so you can simply import the blueprint and have the whole thing open up just like that. And also access to the Airtable base where you have this post example with the two automations that will process the same information that we process in make, except in code. Make sure to jump into my community, the NoCode Architects, it's a growing community. You can get tech support, access to a make and Airtable workshop, and you can also access my library of automations like the video that you saw today. I hope to see you there, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.